Hey there, Andrea Seidel here. I hope you're doing amazing. So I highlighted such a good book and you know me, I'm obsessed with books that are so great for enhancing our well-being or contributing to our happiness, how we can safeguard our mental health as well as pull in all the positive psychology and the amazing nuggets of wisdom from these amazing books and of course books change lives like so I love that these books have the potential to impact us on, on so many levels so here is a summary kind of my key nuggets my key takeaways from the book vital signs the nature and nurture of passion by Greg Lavoie now oh my gosh this book is so good because I it, I it amazes me that books always come available at like times when you really, really need them. And so he explores the nature of passion and its role in living a life that feels really meaningful and really, really good. And he does talk about all the concepts of this idea of passion and how it's it's important for us when to feel like we have full vitality in our life and that we have purpose and we have, you know, we're living a life that's really authentic to who we are. And so he does help us walk through, you know, how to identify our passion, how do I cultivate it, how to build it and how to sustain the passion. Have you ever woken up and just felt like, you know, bored with your life or just kind of like feeling the mundane uh, in various aspects of your life, perhaps. So that is why this book is so good, because he does examine all the obstacles and the challenges that maybe stop us or inhibit us from fully embracing our passion. So things that might hold us back, things like fear or societal norms or what we should be doing, or like just even self-doubt. So he provides us with strategies for overcoming these obstacles, for helping us to tap in to what's so important to us. Where's our enthusiasm? Where are you enthusiastic? Where's your passion? And so Vital Signs, this book does encourage us to delve into deep self-reflection, looking at, you know, our interests, what is it that we value and allowing us to really take action in our lives so that we can focus on things that truly matter to us. And really we want to live authentically to what truly matters to us, right? And to pursue growth over fear. That's one of his key messages in his book is to pursue this idea of growth over maybe fear holding us back. So embracing failure as a natural part of the journey towards our passion and fulfillment. So, okay, you ready? So we are going to jump in. So he talks about this idea of passion and how it manifests in our lives. And so what we want to do is recognize that passion is a vital sign. So passion is not just like a fleeting emotion, but it's a vital sign in our life. So when something comes up and it's like, you feel really passionate about something, that's a marker telling you what truly, truly matters to you. And it's what gives your life meaning. So look at passion as a vital sign. It's a sign that you are on the path uh, to a really vital life, to the life that, you know, is aligned with your, that brings you meaning and purpose. And so he also talks about that discovering your passions is it really is important. Like we need to explore and discover the pat your passions, right? By paying attention to all those things that excite you, what energizes you, and by identifying these activities and then pursue them, pursue your joy, pursue them in a way that it makes you feel fulfilled. And so it's important to uncover your passions. So discover them and uncover them. And then he does talk a lot about this idea of overcoming fear and any resistance that might be standing in the way. So recognizing it, right? When, when we are pursuing our passion, he suggests that we want to overcome these obstacles, right? So we want to confront some limiting beliefs. We want to step out of our comfort zones. And then he talks about living authentically, embracing your passion. It leads to living a life that's more aligned with the person that you want to be, that feels like a more fulfilling life to you. And so you want to make sure that it's so important about uh, aligning your actions, aligning your choices with your truest desires and the truest things that you value in life. So 
the other thing is, is that passion isn't just a general overarching thing. We have different areas in our life. So you want to look at the various aspects of your life, including your work life, your relationships, your hobbies, even your personal growth. And so he does encourage us to cultivate passion in all areas of our life, not just one area. And, and then he teaches us actually how to cultivate this, like the strategies to cultivate them, right? Including goal setting and seeking inspiration and staying curious and fostering a mindset of growth and learning. And so let's jump into some of that. So let's see what else he talks about in his book. Like um, the other thing that we might want to talk about and think about too is why do we lose touch with our passion and excitement? Why do we allow it to get to a point where we're feeling really like, you know, we're not getting out of bed excited. And why do we lose that, you know, spark from when we were a kid that what energized us or even, you know, in our early 20s or so it's kind of we want to recognize what might be getting in the way. So he talks about things like social conditioning, like societal norms, the expectations of what society has on us and the messages that we might be getting to discourage any risk-taking behavior or, you know, because we're pursuing stability and security instead, that it might dampen our enthusiasm for pursuing our passion. The other thing is fear, right? Fear of failure, fear of criticism, fear of rejection. Um, they can prevent us from fully embracing our passion. And so he does talk about how fear and resistance can manifest in things like self-doubt, procrastination, avoidance, and then it, it, it inhibits or it ultimately hinders the pursuit of what truly excites us and, and fulfills us. The other things that why we might lose touch with our passion and our excitement is that we might have some external pressures, right? Family expectations, financial constraints, societal judgments, all those things might suppress or make us neglect our passion. And so, right, we might meet other people's expectations or fulfill obligations that divert our attention away from our personal interests and excitement and enthusiasm. The other thing that he talks about that might be getting in the way is just this lack of self-reflection, this lack of simply going. We always go on this autopilot kind of thing. So sometimes we may not take time to really reflect on what truly brings us joy and what truly brings us fulfillment. So he does encourage us to gain this self-awareness and introspection because we might drift away from our passion. We might drift away without even realizing it you know, that time when you wake up in the middle of your life, and you're like, what, what am I doing? I don't like this. <laughs> and the other thing is burnout or disillusionment can also get in the way of our passion. So we might have continuous stress, or we might be overworking, or we might be burnt out. And we're depleting our energy and our enthusiasm leading to just a sense of, oh, well, you know, it's a, another day in paradise kind of expression. Like we detach from our passion. And so it's so important to, we want to build ourselves up, practice self-care and balancing ourselves so we can maintain this sense of passion and, and prevent burnout. The other thing is life transition and massive changes. So major life transitions like career changes, relationship upheavals, or just personal crisis, they can disrupt us and they can disrupt us from our sense of identity or our purpose. And we might lose touch with our passion temporarily. We might lose touch with what it is that's really important to us. So those are all why we might lose touch with our passion and our excitement and enthusiasm. So now, you know, I love positive psychology. So this book is so great because it really does, although it's not explicitly rooted, explicitly rooted in positive psychology, it shares so many themes, right? The principles of this idea of focusing on our strengths, connecting to our enthusiasm, what excites us, what's aligned for us, as well as making sure that we're resilient and we're building ourselves up. That self-awareness piece is this mindfulness piece and living authentically. And so by exploring the nature of our passion and engagement he really does guide us to a more fulfilling and meaningful life within his book and he in, in encourages that right making sure that we are aligning our goals and things like that with what is true for us 
Okay, so let's talk about how we can ensure that our lives are not just a series of routines, we're not getting burnt out or monotony, and that we're not really, you know, how do we ensure that our lives aren't just a series of the mundane, but it can be a beautiful, vibrant expression of our deepest passion and our deepest desires. So how do we do that? Like, this was really interesting to me. Okay, so again, we talked a little bit about it, but self-reflection and awareness is is one of the key steps. So he does talk about the importance of reconnecting with your passion, right? Taking time to explore those interests, those things that you value, your true desires, and just gaining clarity on what truly excites you and fulfills you. So taking time to build that awareness on what it is that interests you, right? I know like, like who are you when no one's looking? Like what Instagram feed are you following? Or what excites you when you see it in someone else and you feel that little ping of envy? And like more of that for me, please. So self-reflection awareness is one of his keys, like how we can ensure that we are living a vibrant expression of our deepest passion. Uh, also identifying resistance. So encouraging us to look and identify the fears that might be holding us back or any resistance that might be holding us back from pursuing our passion or what excites us, what brings us joy and acknowledging and challenging these limiting beliefs or negative thought patterns that can help us. So we overcome these barriers to our passion. And then his main message too within his book is exploring a curiosity. So he does emphasize this sense of curiosity and openness to new experiences, right? So trying new things, exploring, exploring new interests or hobbies or activities, and that allow us to uncover maybe hidden passions or things we didn't even realize that we liked or might reignite your enthusiasm for life. So he does emphasize this idea of, of exploring with curiosity, looking with a sense of curiosity and openness to new experience and trying new things. He does talk about setting goals as well and taking action, right? So rec he recommends basically being specific like and, and recognizing that just by taking consistent action towards, you know, your passion can really, really help. He does talk about breaking down your goals into manageable steps and then holding yourself accountable to them, right? So slowly make progress towards rekindling that excitement in your life and rekindling that motivation. And so by setting goals, it's like, you know, you, maybe you miss the days that you were running a lot. And so like, okay, like let's break down that and slowly like put that into our life and take action towards it. So maybe you start by going power walking, you know, for 10 minutes every day, maybe you build up your, you know, so you kind of break your goals down into manageable steps and then holding yourself accountable so that you can make progress towards rekindling that excitement. So also, I love this part. So finding inspiration. So he talks all about this idea of seeking out inspiration from the world around you. So getting curious, yes, he talks about that a lot, but also looking for various sources of inspiration. So maybe it's books, maybe it's podcasts, maybe it's getting out into nature and observing like what other passionate individuals are doing and exploring you, like what uplifts you? What is a stimulating experience for you? Or like what can help reignite your enthusiasm, reignite your creativity? It's like, oh, I like that. Or, oh, I get really excited about that. Or, and so it's really just finding inspiration I always say sometimes like, you know, we might scroll through Instagram or we might be on social media and use that as an amazing tool of almost like investigation. It's like, oh, I like that, like more of that for me, or I want to travel and do that, or oh, that retreat sounds really exciting. Or, you know, so the idea is, is that really seeking out inspiration from a variety or various sources can really help us to reignite our enthusiasm. He does talk about cultivating resilience, right? So he acknowledges that we want to rekindle our passion, right? Sometimes we might have setbacks. Sometimes we might have challenges. So he does encourage us to cultivate resilience and perseverance. And, and he talks about recognizing that, you know what? 
it is going to take patience. And, you know, sometimes we want to view obstacles as opportunities for growth. And he talks about how keep thinking as it is you're learning and, you know, you and, and see opportunities of challenge, not for reasons to give up, but to keep moving forward. And he talks about this idea of um, deliberate practice and how it takes hours and hours of learning and growth. Um, and so we can recognize that sometimes by pursuing our passion, we do need to have this resilient mindset or the grit and perseverance that we talk about in positive psychology. And then that, yeah, it's going to take you know, 10,000 hours putting in the time and effort towards the things that we're very passionate about, right? And so view those obstacles and challenges as growth, right? Rather gathering information, right? But not reasons to give up on our passion. So he does talk about this whole concept and common theme in his book of embracing authenticity. So knowing what things are aligned for you, noticing every on a day-to-day -day basis, what actions and choices are aligned with your truest values and desires for yourself. So always be evaluating and moving in that direction. I love the way he put it in his book. It's this idea of living authentically and living true to yourself. It can really help us to be in a life that feels more meaningful and fulfilling. So it's like if something attracts you to it, go towards it, right? And see everything as a curiosity and like be open to trying those new things are going in the direction that brings you joy. And I always have this expression, let joy be your magnet. And it's kind of like, that's the theme within his book as well. All right. So, okay. So I had to do some things. So basic overview of how can we ignite passion? It's like, oh my gosh, how do I do that? So first of all, we kind of talked about them a lot, right? So recognize any blockages, um, notice, acknowledge feelings of stagnation or lack of inspiration and know that like, how can we tap into joy and excitement and enthusiasm? And then identify the cause, right? Look for those blockages. Where is it? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it uh, monotony? Have you been doing the same thing over and over again? Is it societal norms, external pressure, that kind of thing holding you back? And then also to explore your passions, really reflect on those activities that bring you joy, that make you feel like you're in alignment with purpose, that spark enthusiasm in you. So exploring your passions. And then obviously challenge those limiting beliefs or those negative thoughts, replace them with empowerment, empowering thoughts and affirmations. And then the goals, set those meaningful goals, break passions into achievable steps. So if you're passionate about going on a retreat, well, what are all the action steps that can help you, you know, execute that and make that happen? And then also taking that action, right? Experiment. So he talks, I love the way he puts this. He talks about taking small steps and exploring those new activities that are aligned with your passion. And if that didn't work, okay, move on to a different one, like exploring and experiment. Look at it like an experimentation. And then also seeking inspiration and support. So looking, surround yourself with resources and sources of like like-minded individuals or people that motivate you or that bring that joy and excitement and uh, be patient with yourself. He talks about self-compassion and celebrating your progress and just staying open and flexible, embracing those new opportunities for yourself, right? Um, yeah, so he does offer this so many amazing things within his book and some of the exercises that I love. So his book, Vital Signs, um, that can help us is he talks about taking a passion inventory. So this is cool. This is something you can do right away. So reflect on past experiences that have brought you joy, listing your passions and listing those passions that you might want to explore further. So take an inventory of those things and experiences that have brought you joy and list them, start a list and then explore those further. See how you can start integrating them back into your life. So another thing is a passion map. So visualize passions, like the presence of your passion in various areas of your life. So you could say work passion or, you know, family life passion or a recreation, like that kind of thing. You can create a passion map for all the areas of your life and noting like, where are you thriving and where are you lacking and where you might want to infuse a bit more passion. 
And then timeline, you could do a passion timeline. So we talked about creating a timeline of pivotal moments that shape, you know, your relationship with passions. Like maybe you followed your passion here and you started a magazine or you followed your passion here and you, you know, subscribe to this magazine or blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you can see a timeline of pivotal moments that shape your relationship with your passion. Another thing he suggests is passion journaling. So recognizing and writing moments of excitement in your day, moments of challenge, and just notice the growth related to your passion. And just by journaling, this can bring lots of awareness. Okay, now this is my favorite step. So this is passion experimentation. So these are things to step out of your comfort zones. And by trying new things, you might notice new passion, or you might notice that a passion that you already have, and this just reignites it for you. So exploring, and he does suggest this, it's like step up. So it's like merging, okay, we have security and we have like trying new things and passion, right? It, there's both of them. We can't like, you know, have one without the other. So it's kind of like, okay, so the, it's sacrificing a bit of that security so that we can explore explore and experiment. So stepping out of those security and comfort zones and really try new things, maybe new activities that are aligned with your potential passions and testing them out. He says that see it as an experiment, which I, I love that idea. And then he does talk about passion visualization. So imagine a life filled with your passion and maybe with your purpose and visualize the impact that you're having and just explore and have fun, like daydream about it. And then of course he talks about a passion action plan. So setting specific goals, identifying potential obstacles, and then brainstorm strategies to pursue those passions effectively. So create a passion action plan for yourself. So, so, so fun and exciting, actually. So that's about it. Oh my gosh, this book is so good. It's like all about reflecting on our journey of exploring passion and engagement, like getting fully engaged in our life. And sometimes we just sit back and we take a backseat approach to our life. But this book is all about, we want to gain that vital sign again. We want to like gain that vitality in our life. And the, and it's so powerful. Like tap back into you, like your values and what truly matters to you. And so I'm curious, you know, how is it that this is going to help you? Like, how will you use these insights to cultivate a life that's filled with, you know, your purpose and meaning and just feels like engaging and fulfilling? How will you do that moving forward? And I hope some of this inspired you, right? So pursuing, uh, fulfilling a meaningful life, uncovering your passion and embracing this idea of engagement in your life, so essential for our personal growth and our well-being and our happiness. And so, okay, I have a challenge for you. Okay, so consider challenging yourself to step outside of your comfort zone. Pursue a passion or an interest, just even if it's an interest um, that you've been hesitant to explore. So I'm going to challenge you to Think about stepping outside of your comfort zone and pursuing a passion or an interest that, that, you know, you haven't, maybe you've been hesitant, maybe you weren't sure. Um, and so I challenge you to try that. Embrace that maybe potential discomfort or uncertainty and just take some bold action towards what excites you and what fulfills you. You know what? Worst that can happen is like, you're like, okay, yeah, no, that's not for me. Or holy cow, this is cool. This is sparking an enthusiasm in me and an excitement and that it's going to fulfill me. And maybe it'll add to more things. So, so that's about it. That is Vital Signs, The Nature and Nurture of Passion by Greg Lavoy. So, so, so good. I hope you got a lot out of it. And um, I'm so thankful for you listening to this book club and uh, enjoying the summary. And I hope that you can take out some action actionable nuggets from it. Have a wonderful day, everybody. 